Today, I have the pleasure of speaking with Tony Sklar from Ideonomics. How are you today, Tony? Fantastic, Tracy, and thank you so much for having me. It's always a pleasure. Tony, uh, I just love the headline from that last story we did. With rapidly developing EV businesses and great fintech assets, sounds like good Ideonomics. And speaking of that, you're working on your Better Battery Technology Fund. I think that's what you were referencing prior to this interview. Let's talk about your deal with Energica, please. Let's talk about Energica, an Italian listed EV high end motorbike company. Now, why are we in that space? Battery technology. So, as you and I have talked about this previously, technology in the EV space is brand new. Not brand new, but new enough that it hasn't had a lot of traction, no pun intended, in the industry. And technology always flows downhill. So having a seat at the table of the top battery tech folks in Europe, which is another reason why we made that Silk EV investment, is great for our shareholders. So Energica, fantastic team. Livia and her team have come from a racing background. They have been in the um, they've been in the high-end motorbike industry for quite a while. And EV, like a rocket ship, makes these things so much faster. You can go zero to a hundred just like that. So Energica is um, is perfect for Ideonomics, Italian-based listed company with all of the battery technologies and one of the only European players to own their own battery tech. And that is important for Ideonomics shareholders because if you think about our two-wheeled and three-wheeled divisions um, in Tree Electric, you can see where we're going with having this technology and inevitably having it flow down into our two-wheelers as well. So great to have a seat at the table. Fantastic uh, team with Livia and her entire family who has been in this motorbike industry for quite a long time. And as I said, having this alongside of our Silk EV investment makes a great move for our shareholders. And so, of course, this has been part of your ongoing acquisition, partnership, EV investments. You were talking about your Silk EV deal. Now, in full disclosure, I am a shareholder of Ideonomics. After our last interview, Tony, what can I tell you? It's hard to resist. Congratulations. Thank you. you well. I, I, I believe I will. Can you talk to me about Silk EV, please, and that deal? Sure. Again, high-end performance vehicles with battery technology developed in Italy, in the Motor Valley. And that's where we want to be. We want to have a seat at that table. If you think about the technology industries as a whole, whether it's cell phones all the way through to television sets, the high-end flat screen OLED or plasmas or LEDs when they first came out, very expensive, very high-end, always showed up in the high-performance te uh, technology areas. Same thing in EV, going to have a lot of high-end technology in high-performance vehicles because that's really where it's needed. And then that is going to end up flowing downhill into all what is going to be our commercial production. And these are really important investments for our shareholders because not only do we have a seat at the table and access into what is being developed in these high-end technologies, Technologies, but makes sense for our customers because they know that they're going to be getting technology that's flown through, uh, flowed through from the best of the best. And of course, Tony, Ideonomics has great volume. A lot of people are looking your way because, you know, arguably you're at the right place at the right time, but there is some question over how to explain what Ideonomics is because you are in a number of different areas. Can you clearly articulate how you're selling Ideonomics presently? Thank you very much, Tracy, for that question. Absolutely. So two two uh, things that I want to bring up here. Ideonomics Capital and Ideonomics Mobility. Ideonomics Mobility, we are the we are in the commercialization of EV. And that's really important. We don't really deal in the consumer side. A lot of great vehicles that are coming to market with the Lucids and Tesla leading the pack and Lee Auto and Neo, great vehicles, Polaris that are showing up and many of the other car companies as well. But really for Ideonomics in our sales to financing to charging model, it's the charging solutions that we really feel is going to have the most impact for our investors. And if you look at maybe 
maybe some historical companies like the auto industry versus the energy companies. It's the energy companies that have continuously made profits and have given um, great value to shareholders for that longest period of time. So within our sales, which is the fish uh, hook to get folks onto the EV train, if you will, all the way through to our charging model where we have recently made our acquisition of Wave, where you can see that it's the charging and that is where our our future really lies. So again, why do we make these investments in the high-end battery technologies like we just said in uh, about Energica is because the vehicles themselves need to have that high performance, high gauge technology, and then inevitably work through to the charging solutions, which is where we feel our shareholders um, have have the best uh, have the best longevity. Now, not neglecting our ideonomics capital side of the house, fintech plays a great role in not only merging um, solutions on both sides of the house, but you can tell with our recent acquisition of Timios, our our cash flow generating businesses that are really still. Um, at the forefront of some of the new blockchain technologies that are flowing through into the industry. We've seen a lot of regulation to open up in that. We still own our ATS and our broker dealer. And as we continue to grow out the ideonomic side of so ideonomics capital side of the house, you're going to see a lot more merging between those two entities. So those are really important things to remember when you look at ideonomics and you have a look at what is our up and coming uh, year end financials and then very soon right after our quarterly. So great things to be able to look forward to as we look at those two acquisitions and how they impact the bottom line. And then the future, which is really the EV side of the house or the new energy and propulsion side of the house, where you're going to see a lot more activity. And this is what we think shareholders are very much interested in. It's where all the multiples are lying right now. And it's where a lot of the um, high attention is getting within the financial ecosystem. But at the same time, just as you saw this past week, you know, you know, there is um, there's a lot of um, exuberance in the in the markets as a whole, and as some of the air comes out of the tires in the EV sector, which is mostly the consumer play, it is the commercial EV sector that will really start to have better traction. And of course, you just touched on it. We're anticipating earnings in the next couple of weeks. What else should shareholders be looking forward to in, say, this next quarter, Tony? Because you are, as you said, moving very quickly. Right, absolutely. So, I mean, I, I think that we uh, we continuously um, give our shareholders some great things to talk about, whether it is our Timios uh, um, or our wave transactions through to right into the Energica transactions. I think that we're going to see more um, accretive M&A, not to mention that we've got some very exciting product that we're very, um, we're really kind of going to show the world some of these great things that we've been talking about for a little while here in North America. And of course, Earth Day is coming up quite soon. So we've got some um, wonderful announcements that we're going to be talking about during that time. And I think that there are some great conferences that are on the way up here in this particular quarter, where as well, we're going to uh, make some really kind of significant announcements. So great stuff happening in the second quarter. Also, I want to mention that, you know, as we see more and more vaccinations happening around the world, things like supply chains will begin to open up a lot more and we'll see a lot more product flow. And that gives us the opportunity to continue to talk about our products on the ground as they start to come in um, from various different places of the world. And so I I, I think that here at Ideonomics, we really believe that as these vaccinations roll out and very much hopeful that we don't get some resurgence and some increase in cases. And if that happens, you know, um, we hope that everybody stays safe and that we do whatever we can to uh, to minimize that spread. But as we go forward, I know at least here in the United States, we're very excited about opening up our our businesses and our channels. And we're going to be meeting more with people one on one. Zoom has been great for sure. Um, but as it pertains to our sales to finance, to charging model, you know, pressing the flesh and being next to the customer really, it really does make a difference. So I think we're going to see a lot more increase in uh, in in those types of um, initiatives. And then it also allows, you know, more of the global um, touch and feel as well. So although we've made purchases in various different um, areas of the globe, um, being on the ground and getting that product into the hands of our commercial customers, we hope is going to be just so much more easy. 
Well, as always, Tony, it's a real pleasure. Thank you so much for keeping us updated. Thank you very much, Tracy, and I look forward to speaking to you after our earnings. Cheers.